Welcome back to Tucson Sailing. Today, we're going to be adapting a small utility trailer from Harbor Freight into a boat trailer for a 14-foot phantom sailboat. Even full price, these utility trailers from Harbor Freight only cost about $300, and you can get them for easily $200 or $230 if you wait for a coupon, which comes out every once in a while. They're decent trailers. Um, the biggest complaint about them tends to be that the bearings in the wheels aren't very good, so if you get one, you definitely want to replace the bearings, even if you're not modifying it. You'll note the most obvious problem with this is that the tongue on the trailer is way too short. So the first order of business is to remove the existing tongue and the existing hardware and replace that with a longer tongue that will still be uh, compatible with that hardware. The tongue in the Harbor Freight trailer is two and a half inches wide. So I've picked up this piece of 12 foot long, two and a half by two and a half inch box tube that I've primed and painted kind of red to match the trailer. It's a lot, it's a lot more sturdy than anything else that's on the trailer. Uh, so I'm, I'm definitely not that worried about the weight and it's heavy enough that it'll keep a lot, a lot of weight on the, on the tongue, which is good for the trailer as well. The receiver is just held on by two bolts that go straight through the tongue. So they're pretty easy to take off. You draw a lot of holes. Yeah, come right here. Watch the camera. Can you see that? Okay, and pull that bolt out. I think this will just support it. It will. That big long piece of metal is much thicker than this piece of metal, so it's going to be a lot stronger. It's also a full box no, trailer. What happens if this doesn't support? It will be. Your boat's, this trailer is rated for a thousand pounds and your boat's nowhere near that. Okay, now I'm going to step off. Now may I step off? Dad? If, if you do it slowly so you know it's... Even though I marked these and punched them with a center punch, I still managed to get the holes nowhere near where they're supposed to be, so I'm going to have to finagle these a little bit to get enough room to get the bolts in. Alright. Sometimes you really should just take your time and not hurry. This was one of those times. And that drill bit is, is chattering and, and going all over the place, pushing a little bit harder to try and steady it. Sometimes it just doesn't work. So, off to the hardware store for another half-inch drill bit. Yay. This is right on the welded seam of this tube, and it is noticeably harder <laughs> The metal is noticeably harder uh, than the other side was, and these drill bits are pretty old. So I, since I have to go get a half-inch drill bit anyway, I'm going to go get another one, get a whole new set, and hopefully it'll make drilling these a little easier with little sharper tools. I'm going to have these bolt all the way through this piece of steel, which means that I've got to transfer these holes up onto the other side because my drill bits aren't long enough to go all the way through. So I'm just using this tri-square to make a mark about where this first hole is so I can, up on the top side once I flip this over, I can match these two up. Are you kidding me? First thing I do is I snap it off. Son of a gun. Not making a good showing of myself here, am I?
that sorted. If I'm lucky, these will all line up enough that I can actually get hardware through it. Not even close. Son of a gun. All right, well, one side's pretty good. The other side is way, way off. There is unintentionally a pretty heinous mixture of hardware on this trailer now because it originally came with metric and I'm mostly replacing it with SAE hardware. Um, the hardware store near me did not have graded bolts in metric. And for some of those hardware, I really did want something a little bit stronger. So I went with SAE bolt, SAE bolts. So whoever works on this in the future is gonna have their work cut out for them. All right, that's the front end of this whole thing sorted. We got the receiver on, I've got the little support leg on. It's tight, even though that part's loose, the mount is tight. So now I can shift the whole thing forward and I can start mounting this piece of metal to the trailer. It actually does go on the underside, so I have to somehow get it off and then slip it underneath. Okay, so I've got everything lined up. Pretty much happy with where that is. The original tongue only went to this first crossbar, but I'm gonna take it all the way back just to give it a little extra strength and because I don't really need all the length. That's a 11 inch piece of metal there. 11, 11 inch, 11 foot. I put an 11 foot tongue on it and I think it's gonna be pretty good right there. I'm gonna double check with the boat. I might move that up. Just, I wanna make sure that the boat's on the trailer well. Okay, so I went back and I measured the boat and I took some measurements off of this and I decided that I do want to have the boat a little bit further forward on the trailer. So I shifted the tongue up a little bit. Um, I don't want it too long, so I did leave a little bit there. This isn't going to do anything structural for me, but it's going to make the length kind of where I want it. And that'll put the center of mass of the boat right about here somewhere. So I'll still have, be able to support it you know, in between the center so it's not going to rock too bad. But it'll also make sure there's enough weight forward of the axles to keep the tongue heavy enough. And then I'll put some sort of bow support up here, just to make sure everything doesn't rock. So now I've got four holes to drill. I've got two there, and two there. So I'll get to it. I'm usually not in much position to make really strong rec recommendations about any of this stuff. I mean, nine times out of 10, I'm really upfront. Like, I got no idea what I'm doing here. I'm making this stuff up as I go. I got some knowledge, you know, I'm pretty handy, but I'm making this stuff up. But this one, I broke a half inch drill bit. I've never broken a half inch drill bit. That's just crazy. So either I have all of a sudden lost like any and all ability to, to use a drill, which is possible. Um, these drill bits are faulty, which is also possible, but less likely. Or they're the wrong tool for this job. So I went to the hardware store after breaking my third drill bit of four holes. And I got this bad boy. These things are amazing. If you're drilling something thin in steel, go out and get a step drill bit. Um, I don't think you have to drill a starter hole for these. I, I still drilled like a little eighth inch starter hole. And these things will drill this hole to whatever size I want faster than it takes me to chuck up and change out a bunch of drill, bunch of twist drills to work my way, my way up through all the different sizes. And cost about as much as this twi twist drill kit, which I've already broken two drill bits out of. And they just make short work of this. They're amazing. I, I, this thing cost me 20 bucks best 20 bucks I've ever spent. These are these are great here. Check this out. Okay, we've got these marked out. I've got a little eighth inch or a little bit smaller than that hole started. Just get me going. Got my step drill. Drilling out for this size. I think it's 5 16 not quite half inch. All right, so we just put this in there and let's see how this goes.
Not quite. Close. What? That was like what? 20 seconds, 30 tops. I love this thing. Like of all the things that I've gotten in these projects, you know, I've gotten orbitals, I've gotten orbital grinders. I got the drill, drills new. I got a new cordless drill. This thing, wow, it's so little, it's so simple. It was 20 bucks, but that hole was miserable with that other drill set. And that was a decent drill set, 20 bucks. If you're drilling something thin, get a step drill. They're amazing. Like the only complaint I've got is that the way this cuts, it tends to drag the chips around and it's, and it's taking the paint off. But like, I can touch that up and I've already dinged this thing up all over the place just from trying to position it around and, and dropping it up on my foot a bunch. So I totally, I'd, I'd much rather repaint that than to spend 20 minutes chipping the drill bit out that I just snapped off in the hole. I got graded hardware for these. These are grade eight, actually. They didn't have grade five, otherwise I would just got grade five. It's probably overkill for this trailer, but if something happens, uh, I'd much rather be sitting on the side of the road saying, geez, I used the right hardware and, and everything else failed, than sitting there with a the trailer and two pieces being like, God, I wish I'd spent the last, or the extra five, 10 bucks to get the nice stuff. The only downside is that they didn't have nylocks. So I'm going to have to get some thread compound or something just to make sure those don't work loose over time. You ever have someone tell you to use split washers or lock washers? Uh, do it if they make you, but don't rely on them. Lock washers, in, in any study or any, any research anyone's done, lock washers add absolutely no locking ability uh, to a bolt stack up. So use nylocks use thread compound, use safety wire. Don't rely on just split washers to keep things from vibrating loose. PSA from a bolt guy. So, I came off that high of getting everything assembled and, and getting those holes drilled really easily um, to realize that I assembled this backwards. <laughs> so if you look at the springs, typically in a, I don't even know what that's called, a half leaf spring or something like that, the front side is the side that should be fixed and the back side floats. Uh, and th that was the front of the trailer and I just put this on backwards. Uh, it would be really easy to fix except that this whole pattern is not the same as this whole pattern. So yeah. So I'm gonna have to take that off, drill at least four more holes, and bolt it back on again. So sit tight and I'll be right back. Okay, all fixed. So I took this off, I flipped it around. I did have to drill two more holes here. And so there are those two ugly holes right there. I'll paint those, and if I get fancy, I'll get some plugs for them or something. Probably not, but I'm gonna tell myself I will. Got the support, got the hitch receiver. The next thing I wanna do is I got these, this is just one inch, one inch square tube, about three feet long. I'm gonna bolt it kinda like this, just to provide a little more lateral support because this tongue is so much longer. Uh, so I got some more holes to drill and I've got a piece of steel plate to cut to do that. So I'm gonna go get, get that set up and ready to go. All right, I've got these braces mocked up. They're just, I drilled a hole in either end of these bars. There's one up there under, under there, you can't see it. This end bolts into a conveniently existing hole in the frame. 
and then there's this piece of metal that I'm going to cut down, drill a couple holes in to build everything up here. So I'm going to mark this, I'm going to get out the angle, angle grinder, put on some safety squints, take off my very warm but highly flammable jacket, and cut this piece off. I just managed to simultaneously cut and burn myself, so, ouch. Well, that's that. So that's the last part of like the structural stuff that actually makes this a trailer. So aside from having to put the lights on and a spot for a license plate, of course, it's now a boat trailer. The next thing I need to do is to go flip the boat over and figure out how I'm going to make bunks for it. But that's phase two. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please don't forget to leave a like, a comment, or subscribe. Thanks.